Ladies, here are seven things that you should know as a woman. Actually, these are seven things that your mother should have taught you growing up. Number one, have boundaries. Growing up, you might have been taught to be respectful, to always acknowledge adults, to always be respectful to those in your midst. And while that is important, sometimes I can speak for myself, we were encouraged to be respectful to people who might not have been so kind to us. And as you get older, you begin to develop a mentality that says, this person is mistreating me, but I still have to respect them because of their age or because they're family or because of this or that. And because of that, you lack boundaries in that area today. But as women, it is important to understand that having boundaries is important and it is safe for you. And just because someone is a relative, a close friend of the family, or somebody you've known for a long time, that does not give them the right to disrespect you. So having boundaries is very important. You have to let people know what you like, what you dislike, what makes you feel uncomfortable. Don't ever feel afraid to speak up and say something makes you feel uncomfortable, something makes you feel uneasy. I tell my daughter all the time, if you're walking down the street and you're about to walk past someone and you just don't feel comfortable, don't feel awkward or afraid to cross the street. Um, that's just your personal boundary. That's actually a matter of safety. If you feel uneasy in any situation, even with someone that you have known for a long time and they suddenly start acting different, don't be afraid to put up a boundary where you say, you know what, I'm not going to interact with this person so much. I'm going to just call them opposed to seeing them in person. I no longer feel comfortable in their presence. Also, you can set boundaries in every area of your life, not just relationships, but in career choices. We also been taught that we have to take whatever's available a lot of times or don't be so picky. Um, the old saying used to be, beggars can't be choosy. And as confident feminine women, we are never beggars. So you have a choice in everything and you don't have to accept anything that's handed to you out of fear that you're going to appear ungrateful or not humble. You can choose that this might be a good thing. It's just not good for you at the time. And don't let anybody feel guilty or make you feel guilty for that. So number one, have healthy boundaries and don't be afraid to set boundaries, especially in relationships and in every area of your life. Number two, develop life skills. When I say life skills, I mean things like cooking, cleaning, taking care of your home. You should be able to do the basics of the everyday duties of life. As a woman, I understand that not every woman is a chef. Not every woman is the best cook, the best cleaner. It's not that you have to be the best, but you should be able to do enough to take care of yourself. This is another thing I tell my daughter all the time. You want to know how to make basic meals because if you know how to cook a little something, you don't have to, number one, spend your money all the time. And then number two, you don't have to depend on somebody else to do it for you because you see... While I am open to receiving help from everybody as feminine women, we should want to receive help. The reality is, is that people might not be available at the exact time that you need them. And it's important that you know how to do the basics of life, such as making yourself a pot of rice, such as making yourself a quick dish that you like. You know, I say rice because that's the quickest thing to make. But as a woman, you should have something you can make to feed yourself and to feed your family so that you're not just depending on fast food or eating out all the time. I know in today's society, you know, it's kind of cute or women think it's cute. I don't know how to cook. It's not cute when you're sitting there hungry. And if you find yourself in a situation where you can't order food, you're going to wish that you could have went to the store and bought something simple to make for yourself. So cooking. Also cleaning your home. The totality of a woman is not her domestic duties. However uncleanliness in your home, being dirty. I have been in many homes where the women, they look beautiful. You walk in their home and it's disgusting. As women, that is not a good look. 
It's not a matter of who should be cleaning. As a woman, you should want your surroundings to be beautiful. You should want your surroundings to be relatively clean. I'm not saying that you're doing a deep cleaning every single day of your life. I don't deep clean every day of my life. However, your home should be clean. It should smell good. Your immediate surrounding, the area you spend most of your time in, if that's your living room, you give a lot of attention to that room. Make sure it's vacuum. Make sure you dust. Make sure you wipe off the coffee tables if you have them. Make sure you dust off your TV because sometimes it gets buildup. You know, your refrigerator, the inside of your microwave, the, the microwave plate and the top. Make sure you're doing things like that because when you invite people into your home, you don't want them to get the impression that you are a trifling woman, that you're a disgusting woman. It's just not a good look. So make sure you're taking care of your home as in keeping it clean. And I'm not saying spectacular is not going to be that way all the time, especially if you have a family, but you should know how to clean your house. You should know how to mop. You should know how to vacuum. You should know how to clean your toilets. That's something that's important. Do not let social media think, you, think that you're too cute to clean your house. There's nothing cute or attractive about a woman who looks aesthetically pleasing, but she lives in filth. So develop that life skill of knowing how to cook and clean. You're not doing it for a man. You're doing it for yourself because you're a beautiful feminine woman and you like your surroundings to reflect how you look outside. Okay. Number three, financial literacy or how to take care of your money as women. We need to know how to manage our money and manage it well. We need to understand that, and this is something you really begin to understand as you get older, money can be hard to make at times, and you don't want to just blow your money by spending it in undisciplined ways. So for women, when you get paid, and I know the old school way, they say make sure you pay all your bills first, make sure you do this or that. That's the old school way. My way, the way that I understand that is working for me, is that you pay yourself first. What is the point of paying all of your bills, but you're hungry and your bills should be paid? Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is, is that you will always have bills. There will always be things that need to be taken care of. But if you don't eat, you might not survive. So make sure that you always put money yourself away for yourself first. Savings for yourself. You should be able to eat. You should be able to clothe yourself. And then you take care of your bills and everything. Always have a savings. As a woman, you should have savings. Even if you're married, you should have your own money set aside. I call it, you know, I don't have to take this. I don't have to deal with this fun. And it's not that you're setting up to be able to run away from your husband if you're married, but you should always have a, I need to get up out of here fun just in case because people change, situations change, and you never want to be in a predicament where you feel like you're stuck and that was your only source of income. I understand men should be providers, your man should be providing for you, but you as a woman, even if you're not working and your man is giving you money, save some of that money. Don't just spend it up trying to look like this cute little housewife. Save some of that money, you know, investing, you know, if that's something you're able to do. I'm not knowledgeable of that, so I'm not going to offer you any advice on that, but investing, what I see, what I hear, that's something good to do, especially when you're in your 20s and your 30s. Invest in business ventures. Start your own business. Find ways of making your own money. And then also, don't feel like just because you can, you should when it comes to money. Meaning, you might be able to afford a $5,000 handbag, but you might not need to do it in that moment. Be mindful of how you're spending your money because once again, as you get older, you will see that sometimes money is hard to make. You have to go through a lot of work to get it. And you really, it comes from, it comes to a more mature mindset that if you worked hard to get your money, you do not want to just blow it on things. You see, when you get older, you start finding more joy and experiences rather than things. For me, I like to spend a lot of the money I get on experiences. And then I also like to just have it build up. For me, I get joy in seeing it build up. So as women, financial literacy is very important. Learn about investments. I'm learning more about investments. Have separate bank accounts. You know, you have a joint account if you're married, but also have your own savings so that you can always feed and take care of yourself in case something happens. Number four, number three. And number four, 
your safety. Be safety and street smart, okay? Many women grew up in the hood, many did not. And because of that, many women have that mentality that, you know, that happy-go-lucky, everybody, I can just trust everybody. But the fact of the matter is, you cannot. And this kind of goes into the point that I was making in the first tip about if you feel uncomfortable and uneasy in a situation, don't feel like you're going to be rude or make somebody feel uncomfortable because you're looking out for yourself. There have been many times where a group of people will get on the train because I take the train a lot of times. They'll get on the train. And if I feel uneasy or uncomfortable because they're being loud and obnoxious, I will get on a different car. I'm not afraid to be that woman that got up because somebody else got on that made me feel uncomfortable. I'm the type of woman that if I don't even like how aggressively you're talking to me, I will stop the conversation and walk away. Ladies, you're your safety. Be even in situations where you're at a party. Let's say somebody's talking too close to you. Don't be afraid to say, can you back up a little bit? Thank you. You know, things like that or being around different friends. I saw a video of a woman. It showed her packing up. She said when all they want to do is drink and smoke on the trip. She was packing her bag so she can leave. Nothing wrong with that because her intuition was telling her that things can quickly get out of hand and she's not about that life. So once again, your personal safety, don't be afraid to remove yourself when you feel unsafe. I'm thinking about, remember like, I don't know if you all know those church hugs. They say the difference between a, a boyfriend hug, a husband hug, or a church hug. When it comes to men and relationships, and sometimes, especially if you're a beautiful woman, men want to come in on you and they want to hug you. And, you know, we used to say in high school, cop, cop a feel. If that makes you feel uncomfortable, you don't have to let a man hug you. You can surely put your arm in between you and hug you and say, oh, hey, sweetie, how you doing? So he's not touching any of that. Do the church hugs so you can protect your body space. So your safety is very important. Even when you're having a conversation with someone, don't be afraid. This connects with boundaries also. If you feel uneasy, let them know or remove yourself. Number four. Number five thing that I wish I was taught coming up by my mother is self-soothing and self-care. When I say self-soothing, when you go through things, sometimes because we have been taught that we have to power through everything, that we have to just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep moving forward, we have anxiety, we have breakdowns, we go through mental issues and really don't understand how to make it stop. And when you learn self-soothing, you understand that, okay, when I'm having a panic attack or I feel bouts of anxiety, number one for me, I will say pray. But number two, you can do things such as use essential oils, drink herbal teas, take a nap, rest, meditate, self-talk. These are things that we were not taught. I can speak for myself. I was not taught growing up. Self-soothing, self-care. I grew up in the late 80s and the 90s. And if you even told your parents that you felt overwhelmed or you felt depressed or anxious, they would say something like, go depress them dishes. You're anxious about what? You don't pay no bills. They didn't understand the concept of a teenager, of a person, period, being so overwhelmed that they needed a time out. So self-care was not taught when I was growing up as a woman. I suspect it wasn't taught for many of you either. So I believe as women, we should know how to self-soothe, how to make yourself feel comfortable when nobody else will. I tell my daughter all the time, do what you need to do to make yourself feel comfortable. When you have your time of the month, you know, get your heating pad, make sure you have your, uh, your magnesium so that you can soak and ease the cramps. Make sure you have your Midol or, you know, your, um, ibuprofen, the Motrin, different things that are going to help you. Just have your care pack during that time. As women, we have to have those things that are going to make us feel comfortable during times when we feel uneasy and not always leave that to somebody else to do for us. Because once again, while hopefully you have a beautiful support system, a husband, sister, cousin, a lot of times, a lot of women, they're on their own. And it's important to know how to self-soothe, how to have your own self-care. So that when you do that, you are less susceptible to blow up, have breakdowns, to lash out at people because you know your limits. You know your body. 
You know when you're feeling overwhelmed and when you just need a break. You can just self-soothe and do what makes you feel comfortable. Listen to music. Sometimes if I feel myself getting a little frustrated about something and I don't want to have an argument, I will come upstairs, I will clean my closet, I'll turn some music on, listen to some Tony Braxton or, you know, some of those old school R&B like SWV, Escape, that's my era. I love those songs. I will listen to that and just get my mind right, get my mind right and I'm doing something that's taking my mind off of whatever it is that was bothering me. So don't be afraid to self-soothe and take part in self-care, especially in times where you feel completely frustrated and uneasy. You don't have to keep powering through. You don't have to just keep on pushing. Stop, relax, self-soothe, do some self-care rituals and get yourself together, all right? Number six thing that I wish my mother would have taught me is about men and relationships. I wish that I would have been taught the emotional toll that you go through when you're in certain relationships. And even when you're in a healthy relationship, a lot of us came from a home where either the dad wasn't there or the relationship was very toxic. So you saw mom and dad in the same house, but they were crazy. Somebody was cheating, somebody was drinking, drink, whatever. They was doing a lot. You didn't really see healthy relationships. And for those of you who did, God bless you. But many people did not. And because of that, sometimes you can get into relationships with men who have very toxic behaviors, but because that's all you saw, you didn't understand how you should have been treated as a woman. And I must say for myself, because of the things I saw growing up with relationships, I was on the opposite end of the spectrum. I refused to let any man take advantage of me. I was more like, I'm going to play you before you play me. Or I'm always going to have somebody on the back burner because I know how men can be. So they actually, you know, somebody, i never forget, one of my friends when I used to work in the mall gave me this sticker that said pimp on it. That's what they called me. And I'm like, okay, a woman being called a pimp, whatever, because I just dated different people. You know, take me shopping, we go out to eat, stuff like that. Wonderful. The only time I stopped doing that kind of thing and trading them in is when I met my husband. When I met him, it's like nobody else existed. But until then, I didn't care about these men like that. And I wanted to get ahead of them before they got over on me. And when you have that mentality, that can also be dangerous because you have fear of getting hurt. You always have your defenses up. So knowing healthy relationships and now understanding, especially being a married woman, the toll that marriage can take sometimes, close relationships, that your emotions are going to be spread thin sometimes. I wasn't taught that. And I'm sure I wasn't taught because they didn't know. Because they didn't stick around with nobody long enough to really find out either, you know? And that's kind of the direction I was going until then. And then I wasn't taught that the compromising thing that comes with relationships and how, you know, everything can't just be about you. That's something I learned as I went along. Because once again, I didn't care about these men. It's like, I know how y'all are. Just give me what I need. Give me what I want. And I'm going to the next, whatever. So men and relationships, that's something that I really wasn't taught and something that I wish I would have been prepared for more so, especially with marriage. Because going through those hurdles in marriage and the compromising and the understanding that the person is not like you, he's different from you. And you're going to have to be able to compromise with those differences. My mother wasn't able to have those talks with me because unfortunately she passed on. And my father, he was the source of the problems from my viewpoint. And I had a stepmother, but that's a long story. So relationships with men, that's something you need to really understand and know what you want in a relationship before you get into a relationship with a man. Don't look at what you came from. Don't look at past issues. Look at yourself as a woman and the lifestyle and the way you are and think about the kind of man you want to have. That's very important. Don't just go for what looks good or what people are encouraging you to do or to go after. Think about the kind of life you want and then go into relationships from that pursuit, okay? And lastly, number seven thing I wish I was taught and things that women need to know. You need to know about spiritual matters. You need to have a relationship with God or at least know about God. I was not taught anything about the Lord. I wasn't taught about God. We didn't go to church. We didn't do none of that stuff. Um, when it comes to matters of religion, 
My dad, when he wanted to bring up honor your father and mother, that was the only scripture I ever heard. But as far as anything dealing with God, that was non-existent. And I wish I was taught about God and taught the importance of having a relationship with God because I believe that would have helped me a lot more during my formative years, especially as a teenager, when during those times, if you don't have a strong foundation, you can feel very lost. You can feel like nobody's on your side. And when you have a relationship with God, you know that you're not alone. And I had very a lot of moments of feeling like I was alone and you know, going through it myself, nobody understood because nobody taught me, everybody taught me that it's just about what you see around you and the people you have around you and depend on family. Well, you know, how can you depend on family when the family is the ones are the ones mistreating you, you know? So I didn't learn about matters of God until I met my husband when he started telling me things about the Lord and, you know, telling me different things about why it's important to have a relationship with God and sending me different scriptures and things like that. And, you know, I'm not naive. I understand that everybody is not believing what I believe as much as I wish you did. I know everybody else does not believe exactly what I believe. I will say respectfully having a moral compass. That's something you need to have also. Um, just knowing good old common sense and knowing that God is on your side, regardless if you believe which you should, but you have to know that. And I believe that if I was taught that as a young girl, as a young woman, I wouldn't have had so much panic, so much anxiety, so much fear of different things because I would have known earlier on that I'm never alone, that God is on my side. All right. That was seven things you need to know as a woman, seven things you should have been taught as a woman. If you watch this video until the very end, put the high heel emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. And ladies, there are so many things that we need to be taught as women that we should have been taught as young girls, um, how to carry ourselves as women. You know, I'm going to do a whole video on that because people have a distorted view of femininity and of womanhood and many different things when it comes to being a woman. They think it's all about aesthetic and it really comes down to a mindset and how you view life and how you are as a woman, as a person. We are all different, but there are some things that are universal that we all must understand, all right? Like and subscribe to the channel. I absolutely appreciate you. Share the content, hit the like button. Take care.